Hello, Internet. Today is another sort of sad anniversary for me. Eight years ago, in 2005, my father passed away from polycythemia vera. At the time, I was in eighth grade, and I was 13 years old. My father had been sick for 20 years with this strange, rare type of cancer that was kind of difficult to say and even harder to understand. But he never talked about his disease, and he always tried to make it seem like he wasn't really sick. So for a lot of my life, I didn't even realize how sick he was until the last couple of years when he was in and out of the hospital and very obviously in a physical decline. Over the years, I've done a lot of different presentations on his disease, so I figured it'd be a perfect opportunity on this vlog channel to learn something. Learn something, learn something, learn something today. Learn Something is a new segment on my channel that I'm hoping to do where every once in a while I teach you guys something about science or something that I'm learning that I think is really interesting and I'd like to share. So today I reintroduce myself to all the different components of polycythemia vera, and I'm going to teach you a little bit about them. So first of all, polycythemia vera. We can break up the phrase into a couple of different parts to better understand what it means. We've got poly, which means many, cyte, which means cells, and hemia, which refers to blood. Put together, it's many blood cells. And then there's also the vera part, which means true. Polycythemia vera is a type of myeloproliferative neoplasm or an MPN. These disorders are characterized by excessive cell generation in the bone marrow. Specifically, polycythemia is characterized by an overproduction of red blood cells. Polycythemia vera is a very rare disease, and it occurs more likely in men than in women, and most of the time in people over 40 years of age. In 2004, they discovered that most of the patients that were diagnosed with polycythemia vera were also expressing a mutation in the JAK2 gene. This mutation in the JAK2 gene affects hormones that control red blood cell production. So even when the body is producing enough red blood cells, this mutation tells the bone marrow that it needs to produce more. One strange thing about this mutation is that normally it's a mutation that occurs after conception and therefore is not inherited. The most important thing to understand about polycythemia vera is when you have an overproduction of red blood cells, it makes your blood incredibly thick. There are several different components that make up your blood. You have red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. Plasma is just the liquid that all the cells float in. And platelets help you to clot once you're bleeding. White blood cells help you fight off infection. Red blood cells are what carry oxygen through hemoglobin, which is in the red blood cell, to the tissues in your body. When your bone marrow overproduces red blood cells, all of a sudden your blood gets incredibly thick. This can cause a lot of problems in your body and a lot of strain in your organs. One particular organ that is heavily strained with this thick blood is your spleen. Splenomegaly, or enlarged spleen, is a really common condition in polycythemia vera patients. My dad in particular had a spleen that was originally supposed to be the size of your fist, but ended up swelling up to the size of a professional football. Polycythemia vera also causes things such as dizziness, headache, excessive bleeding, and itchiness, particularly after a warm bath, and blood clotting. Blood clots caused by polycythemia vera can also lead to other symptoms, like bluish skin, fatigue, and vision problems. As most of us know, blood clots can also lead to things like stroke. There are a couple of different ways the doctors can tell if you have polycythemia vera. Most commonly, they just do a count of all of the different cells in your blood. And polycythemia vera patients show an unusually high level of red blood cells. Sometimes along with this, you can have a high level of white blood cells and platelets. Due to high levels of hemoglobin, which is inside the red blood cells, polycythemia vera patients also tend to have really high blood oxygen levels. Now that the JAK2 mutation has been discovered, Doctors can also do a genetic test to test and see if the person shows that mutation. There is no cure for polycythemia vera at this point. A really common treatment, however, is to do what's called a phlebotomy. A phlebotomy is a procedure in which they take out about a pint of your blood and replace it. At one point in my father's life, he was getting one pint of blood taken out per week and replaced with saline solution. Another treatment that polycythemia vera patients undergo is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is really just using chemicals to treat a problem. My father took a chemical called hydroxyurea, which reduces the amount of blood cells made by the bone marrow. He also took interferon, which is a steroid. Interferon stimulates the immune system, which attacks the excess blood cells. Most of the polycythemia vera symptoms can be treated and monitored. However, there are many studies being done currently to research JAK2 inhibitors and seeing how they can affect polycythemia vera patients. There are many complications that can arise in polycythemia vera patients. Like I said, this thick blood puts a strain on a lot of your organs. So many times it can lead to bleeding in the stomach or intestinal tracts or even heart failure. Another really common side effect is gout. Gout is a type of arthritis when uric acid in the blood builds up and causes your joints to swell. 
It's incredibly painful, and I remember a lot of times my dad having huge ankles all swollen up, and it would cause his skin to crack, and it was very painful to walk. A really, really important complication of polycythemia vera is thrombosis, or blood clotting. It can also cause heart attack and stroke. My father was kind of a classic case of polycythemia vera. He showed a lot of the symptoms and a lot of the complications. And unfortunately, a lot of the chemicals that they gave him brought with themselves other side effects. As for the prognosis of polycythemia vera, this is a disease that develops slowly. And most of the times, problems aren't even experienced until after diagnosis. Untreated, polycythemia vera only has a 1.5 to 3 year survival rate. Treated, you can live up to 10 to 20 years after your diagnosis. My father was diagnosed around the mid-80s and lived until 2005. 20 years after his diagnosis. But eventually the complications just became too much. My father experienced kidney failure and at the time of his death was currently on dialysis. But ultimately he suffered from a stroke that put him into a coma and he was not able to recover. But I'm encouraged to hear about all the research that's currently being done, especially since the new discovery of the JAK2 mutation. It's amazing what science can do and it's amazing what medicine can do. While the story of my father is a sad one, it's definitely inspired me to get more interested in biology and to learn more about the diseases that affect us. I hope you guys have learned something today, and I'll see y'all later.